Changing the temperature can also affect an equilibrium. So here we talk about exothermic and endothermic reactions. So for an exothermic reaction, we can think of heat as being a product. So we could write the reaction, you know, maybe it's A plus B goes to C. An exothermic reaction releases heat. The heat exits the system. So we can think of the heat as being produced or as being a product. So if we raise the temperature of an exothermic reaction, if we add heat to it, because that's how you raise the temperature or something, if we add heat energy, that's like increasing the concentration of a product. And what does that do to the equilibrium? It'll cause it to go the other way, right? So if we increase the temperature, what we have to do is we have to think of heat as being a product. And so we'll, we'll shift the reaction to the left. In an endothermic reaction, we think of heat as being one of the reactants. So you have to put heat in, and I should really do this as an equilibrium. So you've got your reactants, and you have to add heat. It's taking in energy from the surroundings to cause the reaction to go. So here, if we raise the temperature, it's going to cause the equilibrium to shift to the product side. Because you're adding heat, heat is one of the reactants, it's going to shift to reduce that. Does that make sense? What if um, A and B were both, I mean, yeah, what if A and B were like limiting reactants, and then if you add heat, would that still speed it up? They're both equal amounts? Um, it would still cause the equilibrium to shift to the other side. Yes. So here's some more examples. Um, this is an exothermic reaction um, in general, and here's a specific one. So the one we were looking at earlier, nitrogen and hydrogen, react to form ammonia, and when they do that, they release heat. So if we're adding heat, if we're increasing the temperature, it's going to cause the equilibrium to shift to the product side. I'm sorry, the reactant side. If we remove heat, that's like removing or reducing the concentration of one of the products, and that will cause the reaction to shift to the product side to replace that. Because it's trying to maintain the status quo, which is not always a good, good strategy in business or something, but it's what chemical reactions do. Endothermic reaction. So we have the general equation up here, and here we've got N2O4 gas plus heat is in equilibrium with 2NO2. What's interesting about this one is this reactant gas is colorless, the product gas is brown. And so you can see visually what's happening with the equilibrium. But if we add heat, if we increase the temperature, it shifts the equilibrium to the right. If we remove heat, if we reduce the concentration of heat, is one way to think about it, it's going to cause the, the equilibrium to shift to the left. So this is this is one that is, is kind of cool to look at. So in this picture they've got a sealed tube containing um, this uh, reaction mixture. <clears throat> so N2O4 and NO2. And when it's warm, when you increase the temperature, when you add heat it shifts the equilibrium to the right, and the tube becomes brown. When you cool this down, when you remove heat, it shifts the equilibrium to the left, and the color changes. And you can see that the NO2 is reacting to form the N2O4. And you can just go back and forth, back and forth all day long if you wanted to. Kind of cool, huh? Any questions? Color is just light waves. How does how does heating up, cooling it down, change the way light reacts with it? Well, it's it's not that it's changing how how it reacts with it. It's changing the compound. Oh. And so this this one is colorless because it's a different combination of atoms. Like arrangement. We did yeah. So this is two nitrogens and four oxygens, and over mm -hmm. here we've got an, one nitrogen and two oxygens. So that's like half of the molecule. And they absorb and emit light differently than when they're combined together. <clears throat> Any other questions? 
You guys ask a lot of good questions. So in summary, in an exothermic reaction, we think of heat as the product. Increasing the temperature will cause it to shift away from that, or shift to the left. Endothermic reaction, we think of heat as being a reactant. Increasing the temperature, again, causes it to shift away from the heat. So here's an example. We are told that this re reaction is exothermic. So if it's exothermic, is heat um, a reactant or a product? It's a product. So we'll just write that in. That's an H and that's an A. That's yeah. So what's the effect of increasing the temperature? Shift to the left. It'll shift to the left. Because we're adding heat. If we decrease the temperature, we're removing heat and it will shift to the right. This is trying to undo what we've done to it. Any questions? Um, before I get to that, so many chemical reactions are equilibrium, they're reversible. And so in manufacturing of chemicals, it's important to understand the factors that affect where the equilibrium lies so that you can shift it to your favor. So if you want more of one side, then you know, oh, I have to increase the temperature, or I have to reduce the volume, or increase the concentration, or do all these different things. And so this, this sort of stuff that we're talking about that seems kind of theoretical, it actually has a lot of very practical application.